TEPCO officials say they've known for more than two years that the tank that leaked radioactive water was standing on shaky ground. They say in a test carried out in July 2011, the tank sank 20 centimeters. They're now looking into whether that had anything to do with the latest leak. The officials say the tank may have become deformed or damaged when it sank. They say a contractor had confirmed that there were no problems with it. After that, TEPCO workers disassembled the tank and reassembled it at the current site. The officials say there are two other tanks that also sank during tests. No radioactive water has been found leaking from them, but workers still transfer will still transfer the contaminated water to different tanks as a precautionary measure. When I talk about Fukushima and everybody coming out, oh, we were misled to believe their so-called environmental expert. Oh, we, how is this fucking guy an environmental expert? How are any of them? And I want everybody who's the newbies coming into this, this has been retorted in exact detail by me from the day it happened. Fox knew, the BBC knew, Reuters knew, ABC, NBC, they all knew in factual detail. Concerns over a toxic water leak at Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant are now intensifying. That is because the country is getting ready to push the nuclear accident warning level to three, which means it is classified as serious. That is the highest level it has been since the huge earthquake and tsunami triggered the massive meltdown back in 2011. Plumegate, I call it the Pacific Genocide. The situation is so troubling. Japan's top nuclear official is now comp comparing that plant to a house of horrors. Chad Myers ex explains uh, the warning level here at Fukushima is jumping now from one to mm -hmm. three. So what does that tell us? What does that mean, Chad? There was a water leak at one of those large barrels that you see. Those big white things that were just on the screen. Think about like, you know, those, those oil tanks around the United States where the oil is stored. Those big tanks, they're all through here, 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 many of them storing the water that is pumped into the system to cool it, then pumped back out. But it's so radioactive when it comes out, you can't just dump it somewhere. You have to put it in these big giant barrels. Like a thousand tons of water can go into each one. They use 300 tons of water each day. Well, one of these was actually leaking and into this pool that is, it was separated. It wasn't like leaking out just everywhere, but it was probably leaking into the ground as well, at least for a little while, about 300 tons of water. So because of that, because of that leak, they're considering taking this from what was just a current level of a one. Now remember now, Fukushima and also Chernobyl were both level sevens, major radioactive launches into the atmosphere. This was an, an ugly, ugly event. So it was a seven. But after the cleanup, a couple of years, now it's back down to a one. What do you want? Do not let these journalistic whores off the hook. But with this dumping or this losing of some of the water and possibly into the groundwater and into the ocean eventually, this could be go up to the three. Three Mile Island was a five, seven, the only two sevens we've had, Chernobyl and Fukushima. So it's not over. I mean, this may take a thousand years to truly clean up everything. Let's lay this up. Look, CNN knew in detail. They refuse to report it. So you know, we're going to have these little bumps in the road without a question. Wow, still a very dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chad. I appreciate well. that. Hello there. Welcome to Newsline. It's Thursday, August 22nd. I'm Catherine Kobayashi in Tokyo. The people who operate the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are wrestling with yet another challenge. They'd already confirmed that more than 300 tons of highly radioactive wastewater has leaked from a storage tank, and now they say it may have flowed into the Pacific Ocean. I've read the study over and over. How many times have I read the study right here of the international team that was over there in June? Plutonium in the water column, 300 meters down, 40 miles out, their conclusion that plutonium is into the current. In June of 2011, workers with Tokyo Electric Power Company detected high levels of radiation inside a ditch. The ditch is about 50 meters from the leaking tank, and it runs into the ocean. Workers have set up hundreds of tanks on a hillside near the reactors. They erected a low wall around the tanks. Still, the water seeped out. 
Officials at Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority said they're considering raising their severity rating of the leak. They rated it as a level one incident on the international scale that runs from zero to seven. They're considering raising their assessment to level three for serious incidents. When do you want it? <laughs> Understand, Fukushima has been pushed into the Pacific every day for 890 plus days. Previously, TEPCO officials had said it was unlikely that contaminated water was reaching the shore. They said the level of radioactive substances in the ocean was not as high as that on land. The IEA, the UN, who's the World I want Health Area, which is really the world I want to kill your organization, they made the decision to push it into the Pacific on day three, pawn it off on the U.S., I cannot overstate this. Officials at the International Atomic Energy Agency have been tracking developments at the plant. They've expressed their concerns. The people at the world's nuclear watchdog issued a statement saying they view the matter seriously and they're ready to provide assistance. This has killed so many people in the U.S. now. My work shows over 200,000. And do you think I'm over it? Oh, no. It, that's a... They say Japanese authorities are supplying them with information and experts at the agency are following the issue closely. Our third story out front, a nuclear crisis. Tonight, Japan on the verge of classifying a toxic water leak at the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant, a level three serious incident. That would be the highest warning since the massive meltdown following the earthquake and tsunami, those images now so famous around the world. Don't, don't you think it's ironic, as I go off and go crazy, give the very first report on Earth about this. I, get, I lay down in detail. I lay out their double plutonium in on the 3rd of April 2011 when it comes out 12-12-12. As I listen to the hearings in Japan, I had Mikado translating for me. And they come out, they were dumping. They did their first illegal massive dump on April 3rd. Our Kyung Law was the first American broadcaster to report from inside the Fukushima plant right after the meltdown. And I want to play a portion of that extraordinary report. We wore head-to-toe protective gear, full facial respirators, and hazmat suits. And then we drove up to the world's worst nuclear accident in 25 years. This is our first look on the ground at the reactors. This is the heart of the nuclear problem in Japan. What you're seeing over my shoulder are the reactors. There are four of them. The two that you see over my right shoulder, those are two of the reactors that exploded in the early days of this disaster. And Kyung Law is out front here with me tonight. I mean, Kyung, just amazing to watch that, the courage it would take, because it's one of those things you don't, at that moment, necessarily feel the risk that you're taking, and, and it could have a, such a serious toll. Two and a half years since this crisis. How serious is this, that this is happening now? This is very serious for this particular agency, the Japan Regulation, the Nuclear Regulation Authority. They don't take these moves lightly. So the fact that they're moving it from a level one to a level three, this is very serious. This is very important. And the global community should take note. They even called the nuclear plant a house of horrors. So there is a ton of radioactive water that's being put into the ocean that they had this leak. So yes, it's very, very serious. Right, so you talk about that they're saying house of wars. And as you say, they're not prone to hyperbole there. So that, I mean, an unbelievable thing to say. Radioactive water's been just dumping into the Pacific Ocean. I mean, it sounds incredibly frightening. So how scared should people be? Well, if you look at how the communities around Japan, the other countries around Japan have reacted, and you've seen them ban Japanese products, jam ban Japanese cars, tea, anything that is Japanese, wow. in the immediate aftermath, mm -hmm. and that fear is still there. You talk to Japanese merchants in Hong Kong, they say, oh, it's hurting our business. This isn't going to help them. But one thing for people to keep in mind is that the people most at risk are the ones who work at the plant. There's a big ocean between us and Japan. Hey, you want it? <laughs> These guys all knew they participated, and even worse than this. Because you guys, I mean, it's been right in your face. I've shoved it right down your throat. You know, everybody says, oh, you're so extreme. I turn off. So you went over to Jans. She did it humorously. You went over to Patrick Henry. He did it intelligently. We did it laid out. You could have picked any one of your freaking sick demographics you could feed. You refuse to believe in the truth because you don't want the... You can't handle the fucking truth. 
That's, and which is kind of amazing when you think about how horrible these things are, just the, the fact that there's a resiliency uh, in Mother Nature for this kind of thing. I mean, on a personal note, I just want to look at that video again of you in that suit. I mean, that suit's fine and good, right? But that's not exactly going to protect you if something's really wrong, and that's something you knew. You were going into a really dangerous area. It took a lot of risk and a lot of courage. How worried were you? Well, we're journalists. We want to yeah. be at the story, right? That's right. And you, you've been there, too. You want to yeah. go and cover it. I was wearing a dissimeter. You had to watch your clock. It was, uh, you may notice that it was almost rushed as I was talking because we had to do it so quickly. So, you know, that was something you had to watch. You had to look at how much radiation your body was taking in because those suits don't protect you. I was breastfeeding at the time I didn't breastfeed my son for about a week after that because I was you know concerned I just right. wanted to make sure um, and even when the initial disaster happened the triple meltdown I was pregnant so you know you had a way what's the risk of covering the story versus the benefit for the public so I mean I chose to stay right. Who's your daddy? <laughs> and they make a lot of money that's the, that's what this is all about that, they, they don't want to report and tell the freaking truth because, God forbid, their pyramid, their glass house is going to come tumbling down. They're going to expose to their spouse. They're going to expose to their kids. They're going to expose to their grandkids. Their life is a total fucking fraud. Right. No, but, but obviously a really courageous choice. All right. Well, Pyong Law, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Okay. Chances are you probably do not recognize this guy. Look familiar? Anything? You may not recognize his face, but his name will ring a bell, especially if you live on the West Coast. Uh, this is Charles Francis Richter, as in the Richter scale. Charles Richter is the namesake of the scientific method once widely used to determine how strong an earthquake is. 7.1 on the Richter scale, 8.3 on the Richter scale, right? This is the guy. And if you do something that cool in life, your gravestone is likely to be this cool after your life. Look. Charles Francis Richter, seismologist. He devised the scale by which the magnitude of earthquakes is measured. Yeah, what would you do with your life? Charles Richter may have passed away 30 years ago, but his scale lives on, as does the scale that was developed by this gentleman, Japanese-American researcher named Ted Fujita. Mr. Fujita is the F in the EF tornado scale. When you hear that an EF5 tornado has just touched down somewhere, that rating is based on Ted Fujita's scale. Disaster scales, these rating systems, they help give us perspective on how bad a given disaster is. If something is a one on a scale versus a five, that tells us how seriously we need to react, how we can rank that disaster against others. I've always thought that the granddaddy of all the doomsday disaster scales was this one. This is the nuclear disaster scale. When this scale's in the news, something's gone really wrong. It goes from one, uh, which is labeled an anomaly, that's the green part down at the bottom, all the way up to seven, which is a major accident. That's the red part at the top. In the history of this scale, there have only been two incidents that have reached a level seven. One was Chernobyl, the nuclear meltdown that took place in the Soviet Union in 1986. The other one was Fukushima the nuclear disaster that hit Japan two and a half years ago. The March 2011 nuclear meltdown in Japan was triggered by an earthquake and a tsunami. It was the most serious nuclear accident the world has, the world has seen since Chernobyl. A seven out of seven on the nuclear accident scale. Fukushima was basically a slow motion radioactive horror film that stretched on for months. But finally, in December 2011, nine months after the initial incident happened, Japan declared that everything was cool. What do you want? What do you think all the hairspray is about? Do not let these fucking journalists off the hook. Oh, we were mis- The fuck they were misled! They were not misled! They are the problem. I termed it black and yellow journalism. They said their crippled nuclear plant was finally stable. All good. Mission accomplished. Shortly after that, Fukushima was downgraded from a 7 on the nuclear scale all the way down to a 1. It went from major accident to anomaly. When do you want it? <laughs> they refuse to fucking report this. This is murder. And that is where the continuing cleanup efforts have remained until today. Despite saying that everything was cool at Fukushima a year and a half ago, things are not cool there. Things, in fact, seem to be spiraling slightly out of control. 
The Fukushima complex has hundreds of storage tanks on site that have been collecting radiation contaminated water from the plant ever since the reactors there were decommissioned. The water that's used to cool down the plant's highly radioactive fuel rods gets pumped into these giant storage tanks where it can then presumably be decontaminated. At least that's the idea. But earlier this week, crews at Fukushima noticed a number of big puddles forming outside one of those big storage tanks. Highly radioactive contaminated water leaking uncontrollably into the ground. The water was so radioactive that a person standing close to it for an hour would get an amount of radiation that a plant worker is only allowed to be exposed to over the course of five years. Today, Japanese officials confirmed that the giant storage tank in question has leaked 300 tons of radioactive water. 300 tons of highly radioactive water have escaped into the surrounding area. And this is not the first issue that they have had when it comes to leaking radioactive water. Last month, the company that owns the plant confirmed that hundreds of tons of contaminated groundwater were not just leaking, but leaking into the ocean. The ocean that we all share. The Pacific Genocide is very real. This new crisis at Fukushima with all the radioactive contaminated water leaking everywhere has led the Japanese government to escalate the situation there from a level one event to a level three event, which is described as a serious incident. For context, the Three Mile Island nuclear disaster in the United States back in 1979, that was a level five incident. What's happening at Fukushima right now is the most serious crisis since the original meltdown took place two and a half years ago. This was a really, really bad thing when it happened. It is still out of control right now, just for some perspective. You're journalistic fucking whores, you marine biologists, and all you fucking journalistic whores. Do not let these fuckers off the hook. This has been pointed to Pacific the entire fucking time. You see one single marine biologist report out of the 300 marine biology departments in the United States reporting anything, not yay or nay. What is the statistical probability of that? You, I'm a stats guy. Get out and run your regression. It's impossible. They fucking know! They know! But they're willing to kill their own family, they're willing to kill their own fucking loved ones, they're willing to kill themselves to fucking protect. That's the hairspray. That's the problem! We have no fucking real leaders that have any intelligence and have any strength. Stay untuned. Hey, you want it? <laughs> Who's your daddy? Uh.